Hey everybody, Josh here for Whiskey Wednesday for Argonaut Wine and Liquor. Today I'm joined by Spencer from High West Distillery. Um, we have an awesome lineup here for you guys today, so we're just gonna jump right in. Spencer, you wanna tell us a little bit about what we got going here today? Yeah, absolutely, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now we're talking about High West Whiskey. So we're uh, based out of Park City, Utah. This was started by a husband and wife duo, Dave and Jane Perkins, uh, in 2006. So they went on a Maker's Mark tour for a wedding that they were going to, and they sort of had this aha moment as they were walking through, uh, through the Rick House. Uh, so Dave comes from a biochem background, and so he saw the similarities and the parallels between biochem and distillation, and uh, said, "You know what? I think we can we can do this." So they had uh, recently moved to Park City and their family, and so they decided to set up shop and start a whiskey house. Yeah, so. I mean it's kind of cool. I mean you think Utah, you don't really think whiskey. No, uh, no, not <laughs> right? at all. So. Uh, ironically, Utah has a has a pretty rich history in distillation, mm -hmm. uh, specifically in, in Park City. It comes from more of a mining history um, rather than what we typically would know as like a Mormon uh, Mormon background. So, mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, a lot of whiskey being made in Park City. A lot of a lot of drinking of whiskey in Park City. Yeah. So. And with that, we got uh, bourbon in the glass. Yeah, starting with the bourbon. So, uh, they as when High West started, they started, uh, and they're sort of known as a, a blending house. So the master distiller Brendan Coyle, he got his master's degree from uh, Harriet Watt in Scotland, and so they have a pretty rich history of blending uh, scotches over there. So he took that that same mantra and applied that to High West, and in 2016 they got. Uh, distillery of the year and so with this bourbon it's a blend of two different mash bills I like to think of this as sort of a, a summer afternoon at the state fair so you get a lot of like sweet corn notes from kettle corn or from uh, corn on the cob you get some of that like uh, sugar that gets developed when that's mm -hmm. on the barbecue and then you also get a little mouthfeel from like funnel cake yeah definitely I mean I was just gonna say the nose is super sweet I mean bright sweet um, you know just a really pleasant nose and then you know, the palate is great. I mean, this is just an awesome everyday drinker. I think we got yeah. it on the shelf in like the twenty eight ninety nine range. Yeah, these these two, the, the bourbon and the double rye are definitely sort of daily drivers, workhorses for, for High West. Um, High West is really known for some of their uh, more allocated and special bottlings. But uh, I like to remind people that High West, uh, they make some fantastic entry level whiskeys as well. Yeah, speaking of, next up we got double rye. What's, what's the significance behind the name double rye? Yeah, so it's aptly named because it's two different rye mash bills. The first one is going to be 95% rye, 5% malted barley uh, that they're getting from MGP. The other is going to be our own distillate. It's 80% rye, 20% malted rye uh, that they add in. Uh, I like to think of this as more of like mom's apple pie that's been sitting on the counter for a whole day. Hmm. So you get all of those baking spices that are really well incorporated, and then you have like a little whisper of green apple on the finish as well. Yeah, definitely some green apple. I get, you know... A, like an earthy herbaceousness on the nose yep. too that's you know what I look for in a rye so I like that a lot yeah a lot of baking spice a little black licorice um, almost some like eucalyptus or dark notes to it that I that are mentholated notes that I really like definitely and that that what you said last comes through a lot on the palate the you know that black licorice a little bit of menthol mintiness um, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's like a slight astringency that, that gives way to a really smooth finish, um, almost like a Szechuan peppercorn kind of like numbing uh, mm -hmm. aspect. Yeah. It just sort of tingles the tongue. Yeah, that I mean, that would be super good in a Manhattan because the sweet vermouth, I think, and the, you know, kind of herbaceousness of the vermouth mm -hmm. would play really well, you know, with some of those minty notes that are already sure. in there. It's not, you know, overly sweet, which if you get a sweeter rye, you know, generally doesn't make a great Manhattan. But I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah, also in a, a black Manhattan. Manhattan, playing mm -hmm. with the, the spices and the herbaceousness of an Amaro, plays really well. Right. Oh, oh, I've got this one oh, yeah. for you. So next we're going into the rendezvous. So this is the next, uh, I would say, evolution of the double rye. So this is the same mash bill as the double rye, but it's aged further. So the double rye is going to be anywhere from, it's a, a blend of two to nine year whiskey. I like to think of it as a bell curve, right? So. Mm -hmm. You have the majority of that's going to be in that four or five year range. Um, you get some spiciness from the younger from the younger distillate, and then the older one rounds it out. So this is going to be four to four to ten years for the for the rendezvous. So you get a lot more, I would say, cherry notes, nougat, caramel, and a little more roundness just from the from the age in the wood. Yeah, some of the, I mean, a little bit of the herbaceousness is still there on the nose, but the like menthol -y notes have sort of dropped mm -hmm. out, right? Exactly. And been replaced with a little bit more of those caramels, those vanillas that make sense from 
being older. Yeah, this was the uh, the flagship whiskey for uh, for High West. So this was the first one that they mm. made. It was named after the first original rendezvous, the Mountain Man Rendezvous, uh, back in the 1820s. Mm. Uh, kind of paying homage to the the mountain and whiskey history that that the Utah ter- territory is known for. So um, this also just got a, a platinum. Uh, award for the 2024 SIP awards, uh, as well as the campfire that we're going to try uh, in here in a little bit. Yeah. So. Ooh. A little bit of pine, a little bit of cherry, almost like an amaretto finish mm-hmm. when you when you exhale, but really smooth. I would have this on its own with just a rock, or if you want to toss this into a cocktail, I would say. Something like an old fashioned, maybe split base with, uh, split base with the bourbon. Do yeah. it how do it how they do at the saloon. So they do, for their uh, for their old fashions, they do a mix of bourbon and the rye, a little bit of demerara and bitters. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Um, and then coming up next, this is a, a fun one for us. This is our last single barrel. So this is um, bourbon finished in PX sherry casks. So we've had this guy for a little while. We've got a screaming price on it at forty nine ninety nine right now, um, and I'm shocked this barrel has lasted this long. This barrel is awesome. Yeah, that's a bonkers price for a uh, for a hand selected uh, bottle in that you guys have. And so this is finished for nine months in uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry uh, um, barrels. Mm-hmm. So. You know, High West has a couple different sherry finishes. Uh, this one is going to be on the sweeter side, just with that PX sherry. Um, and so I think it adds a little bit of like a, for lack of a better comparison, like a cherry dilly bar uh, finish to it. Yeah. Which I really like. That's a great descriptor. Yeah. The um, If you guys aren't familiar, like PX sherry casts in the sherry world are the, you know, sweeter, bigger sherries versus some of the more, you know, kind of refined, a little bit more structured, um, like Old Rosso or some of the other types of sherries, Manzanilla, mm. something like that. But that's good. Yeah, this is awesome. Very good. I love this. Right now. Super red fruity, um, almost like a candied sweetness yeah. to it. Really, really nice. Yeah. Mm. And then next is Campfire. So this was always a super, like I remember, you know, just when I was old enough to start going into liquor stores, like I'd see this and I'm like, what is that? Yeah, so this is a bit of an anomaly. They were the first to do this. So it's a blend of uh, bourbon, rye, and then a blended scotch. So they were, uh, Dave was on a trip to to Scotland for a distiller's convention hmm. or a conference and he was staying at a uh, the Brooklady B, uh, B&B. And during one of the dessert courses uh, at one of the dinners that they were having, it was a it was a honeydew melon with a scotch syrup on top. And so that blending of the smokiness and the sweetness and the fruitiness with the melon sort of gave him that that moment where he was like, I, I see the similarities that I could do flavor profile wise with, with whiskey. And so he took that and he likes to think of this as a, uh, a symphony. Mm. Uh, so the first is going to be the main melody. The, the sweetness of, of the bourbon really kind of drives the bus on this. Right. Uh, with a little bit of that fruitiness and spice. <coughs> Coming from, coming from the rye, uh, just accenting it, and then on the nose you pick up a lot of that that smokiness, that peated yeah. that peated scotch. But as you kind of sip through it, I say that this is a, a two or three sip kind of kind of whiskey because the first taste kind of acclimates your taste buds. Then the second and third sips really kind of give way to this brulee marshmallow liquid uh, s'more kind of aspect. Mm, so there's a little bit definitely. of like dark chocolate notes. Uh, some like marshmallow fluff. Mm-hmm. It's it's fantastic. And then just a little bit, if, if you just held it on there a little bit too long, got a little bit of the char on yeah. it, you get a little yeah, bit of that exactly. smokiness at the back end. But I say this is perfect for anybody that is a scotch drinker that wants to be maybe a little bit more familiar with bourbon or vice versa. It mm-hmm. seems to be that everybody is going towards um, smoky profiles you know you see that with with agave people moving towards mezcal Mm -hmm. people doing that with whiskey and scotch and so this is a sort of a good entry point for anybody that wants to be a little bit more familiar with some peated uh uh, whiskeys but not all the way to the smoky side yeah it's definitely not punch in your face smoke like it's definitely subtle it's on the back end um but it really you know adds just a completely different dimension to the whiskey which is pretty cool and um what's a you know if you were to throw this in a cocktail what would you think with that Oh, you know, so I did a summer cocktail last year with that where I did a, uh, a burnt peaches. So I took peaches, Ooh. grilled them, and got a nice char on them. So there's a little smokiness component to that yeah. uh, with a little Nashville hot honey simple syrup. 
a little lemon juice. So it was smoky, sweet, spicy. It had all those components put together. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, and then last but certainly not least, um, our Midsummer's release of Midwinter's Night Stram. Um, so this guy uh, is this year's release of Midwinter's Night Stram. It is going to be on the whiskey wheel. We'll have a, a decent amount that'll go on the whiskey wheel. So um, we wanted to give you guys a little preview of what'll be on there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, probably their most sought after expression of whiskey that they have. And typically it comes out uh, in, in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were lucky enough to, to find a, a few of these hanging around for y'all. So uh, I'm really happy that we're able to taste these and have these as an option for people to, to purchase here at Argonaut. So this is the, the final form, uh, as I like to say, for the double rye. So this is the final tier, the final evolution. So they take the, the rendezvous and they finish it in uh, tawny and ruby port barrels, which adds a really nice kind of fruity aspect to it. So it's like a really sumptuous marriage of the, the roundness and the bite that you get from the rye with a little bit of the fruitiness and the mouthfeel that you get from these port barrels. Yeah, totally. And I mean, on the palate, it is just a red fruit bomb. I yeah. mean, that is, you know, like we say with some of our favorite Buffalo Trace picks or whatever, those big red fruits um, are some of our favorite notes in whiskey. So, and this is, that is all over this guy. It's almost like cobbler-esque, mm -hmm. like some sort mm -hmm. of like stewed fruit. Has those sweet components, but also has that nice kind of like spiciness that you'll get from like a crust. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you guys uh, get the opportunity to snag one of these on the whiskey wheel, um, definitely worth grabbing. As a reminder, whiskey wheel is the Saturday before Father's Day, June fifteenth, starting at ten a.m. Um, we'll be doing a high end tasting as supplies last, and then we will actually have a tasting for everybody else in line as well. You'll only be able to taste once though, so if you do get to do the high end tasting, um, you won't be able to do the second tasting, but you'll have lucked out, so don't worry about it. And then um, also we have our lottery going for the bottle of William LaRue Weller. Uh, as always, that's one entry, no purchase necessary, one additional entry per Argonaut barrel pick. Um, also, any of these guys and uh, anything we've else we've featured on Whiskey Wednesday this month. Well, Spencer, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Appreciate Adam, it. Appreciate, appreciate it. you sharing some awesome whiskey with us. And come on down and give them a shot. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.